Hello, I'm Adam Pacitti, fairly drunk from Cultaholic.com, and let's take a look at what happened on WWE SmackDown tonight, the superstar shakeup. We kick things off with WWE Champion AJ Styles coming to the ring. Uh, basically, he runs down Shinsuke Nakamura. He says that he's not an artist, he's a con artist. Whoa, hold up. Essentially, the message here is that AJ wants payback, of course, after being hit in the cock and bollocks quite a lot. Uh, anyway, Nakamura doesn't come out, he's spineless. Instead, it is Aiden English and, of course, Rusev, who is once again being presented as a heel, 100% being presented as a heel here. And it's just, once again, so unbelievably frustrating to see the most over guy, not just on the SmackDown roster, but on the whole WWE roster as being presented in this way. Like, he's money, obviously. I don't want to keep going on about this. We're all frustrated by it, but anyway, this sets up a match between AJ Styles and Rusev. Uh, AJ fairly quickly locks in the calf crusher. Aiden English comes in, interferes, and mm, it's a DQ. Out comes Daniel Bryan to make the save, which ends up setting up the main event of tonight's SmackDown, which was Aiden English and Rusev taking on Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, which was set up by Paige, who did a bizarre, Teddy Long impression. Obviously, Teddy Long, famous for making tag team matches, holla holla, player, etc. Paige did an impression of that. It was, it was something else. Next up is Shelton Benjamin, who comes out and cuts a heel promo, explaining that he never needed Chad Gable. Chad Gable, of course, was drafted to Raw last night, so they are both going it solo. I don't know if we'll see Gable once again team with Jason Jordan when he's good to return, but anyway, yeah, uh, a, a strong promo from Shelton Benjamin. Forgot how great his promos could be, actually, but he wants some competition. Some competition on SmackDown, and out comes Randy Orton, who is fairly swiftly cut off by the new US champion, Jeff Nero Hardy. I think most of us expected Hardy to make the move to SmackDown. Uh, obviously, he won the US title last night, and you need a mid-card belt on each brand. But it was good to see him, and they had a really fun match. Him versus Benjamin was good, and I can't believe I'm actually talking about a Shelton Benjamin versus Jeff Hardy match in 2018. But it was good. Jeff retained, which is the right decision following his win against Jinder Mahal last night. But, I, you know, I hope this sparks a decent mid-card run for Shelton Benjamin, a guy who I think is often overlooked, often sort of gets lost in the shuffle, but I think in a few years' time, we'll be looking back at him as a tremendously underrated wrestler. I really, really love Shelton Benjamin, and yeah, I hope he sticks around the mid-card and even eventually does pick up the US title. We then get a pre-tape promo from The Miz, who is at home. He's not at SmackDown tonight. Uh, he's there with his wife and daughter, and he continues the Daniel Bryan beef. The feud that is so many years in the making, and I am salivating at the thought of this finally happening. Uh, it's actually been announced that Brian and Miz will square off at house shows here in the UK, which surely means that it's going to come to TV and pay-per-view sooner rather than later. I cannot wait. A strong promo from The Miz. It served its purpose. Welcome to SmackDown, Miz. After the break, it's revealed that Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose are now on SmackDown as well. This will be interesting to see how it plays out as far as the page dynamic goes. Will she end up giving them preferential treatment as far as booking goes? Will she give them, you know, title matches, bigger opportunities than everyone else on the roster? Uh, that'll be interesting to see. I think Sonya Deville is an especially great get for SmackDown. I think she has a load of potential and somebody that we'll be talking about a lot in years to come. Then we get Jey Uso versus Harper. This was just a squash match. You know, you want to continue the dominance of the Bludgeon Brothers after their big win at WrestleMania 34. And yeah, this match did that. I was expecting something a little bit more. And I'm kind of desperate now to see the Bludgeon Brothers do more. But I think with some of the guys who are now on SmackDown, we'll get to those in a little bit, I think they've got some stiff competition. Stiff, Jack the Jobber. Next up, Sin Cara is in the ring and he needs an opponent. Who could it be? Straight from Raw, Samoa Joe is on SmackDown, which is terrific. Uh, this was uh, another squash match, really. It went on a little bit longer than I thought it would do. Sin Cara actually got some offense in and of course picked up the win. 
he didn't. Samoa Joe picked up the win, of course. After the match, Joe picks up the mic and runs down a few more prominent members of the SmackDown roster. He runs down saying he wants to kill Daniel Bryan, he wants Randy Orton, and he wants WWE Champion AJ Styles. A little bit unusual considering where Joe's going uh, in the coming month or so. He had a very difficult job, and it's something that I've never really seen as a wrestling fan, of having to promote two upcoming pay-per-views at once. Of course, the greatest Royal Rumble is coming, and then we've got Backlash as well. I don't know, it, it felt weird. It was it, It's convoluted, but Joe did a really good job of getting his point across, and made a big impact on his first night on SmackDown. Uh, I can't wait to see where they go with Joe. We then see a vignette for Sanity, who have been doing tremendous work down in NXT. Unfortunately, there are only three of them, not four. Nikki Cross was, was left out on this, um, but I hope she continues to shine as far as the women's roster goes down in NXT. She's really talented. It was odd not to see her there. I kind of... I, I personally thought she was she was ready. I, I don't know if she, you know, that might not be the reasoning behind it, actually. They might just have something in mind for her down in NXT. Hopefully she'll rejoin later. For me, this is the match that I want to see the Bludgeon Brothers in. You know, the big guys from Sanity taking on the Bludgeon Brothers. That's what I want to see next, but there's another option there. There's another uh, SmackDown get, another tag team coming to SmackDown from Raw this time, who I'll get to in a little bit. We then see Daniel Bryan backstage being interviewed by Renee Young, and behind him is a returning Big Cass. Obviously, Big Cass has been out for a while due to injury. Uh, Big Cass is back. He runs down Daniel Bryan. He says that he's not big because Big Cass is big. I'm not sure if you noticed that. Big Cass is big. Daniel Bryan, not as big. I'm not a massive Big Cass fan, personally. I'm interested to see what they do with him. It's good to see him put the Enzo stuff behind him. And I hope he is able to impress on SmackDown. Uh, welcome back, Big Cass. Next up, Carmella comes to the ring and cuts a fairly cliched heel promo about her win of the SmackDown Women's title after her successful Money in the Bank cash-in. I'm happy that the first Women's cash-in was successful, but it does feel weird still that after Charlotte defeated Asuka, ended this monumental billion-day streak that she would lose it two nights later on SmackDown. I'm not sure it was the right decision. I know obviously the Iconics did do the beatdown and Charlotte was vulnerable and all that stuff. I don't know, it just feels a bit weird. Anyway, Becky Lynch and the Iconics came out, which led to Charlotte versus Billy Kay. This was a more competitive match than I, I think I imagined. I get that it's Billy Kay's main roster debut and everything. I just feel like this is unusual booking. You could have given Charlotte somebody to make her look strong after, you know, beating the streak, as I say, and Billy Kay could have done with a win. Anyway, Charlotte wins and is immediately clobbered with the title by Carmella. A big old kerfuffle ensues with some Kevin Dunn shaky cam bollocks. It's impossible to follow. Hate it. Hate it so much. But then... It's the SmackDown debut of Asuka. I think a lot of us were worried about Asuka's direction following WrestleMania and the ending of the streak. It was a character that was built so heavily around the idea of this unbeatable streak. And now that's over, what do you do with her? I think the brand change, her coming from Raw to SmackDown, is a really good start. That'll freshen things up for sure. It'll be interesting to see, I guess, whether she go straight for the title, whether she wants a Charlotte rematch. But yeah, it's good to see her on SmackDown. Another huge get for the blue brand. Next up, Gallows and Anderson are revealed as the latest roster additions to SmackDown. Another good get. No Finn with them. I think maybe some of us were expecting Finn to come and join them and have a, a three-man team there. No, it is just Gallows and Anderson, but an often underutilized team who hopefully get the chance to flourish on SmackDown. Then we find out that another tag team is on their way to SmackDown, The Bar. Sheamus and Cesaro are coming, but that's not as big as the next get for SmackDown, the immortal one, Ron Killings. Our truth is coming to SmackDown. Oh, yeah, he's been away injured for a while. I don't know why I'm laughing. He's been away injured for a while. Um, very nice to see R-Truth. It was a funny backstage promo with the New Day, R-Truth, and then Ty Dillinger. It was fun. Uh, I don't see him really doing anything in the future, but he's in SmackDown now, and he is the immortal one, you 
our truth of maniacs, killings maniacs. Genuinely more importantly though, we find out that NXT standout Andrade Cien Almas is coming to SmackDown. I think Jack described Almas best when he said he's like a good Del Rio. That's kind of the way that I see him. He's got all of the great character traits that Del Rio had, but is he's, he's just better. He is better. And I can't wait to see what SmackDown do with him. Like, I'm really, really excited about this. I hope he's propelled to the upper card, like straight away, because he's so terrific, incredibly charismatic, great in ring work, obviously. Half, one half of a, a five-star Meltzer rated match, that's important. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's good. This is the right time to bring Almas up. And yeah, can't wait to see what happens with Almas. I hope he doesn't get lost in the shuffle. But then it's the main event, Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles versus Rusev and Aiden English. This was a fun, fast-paced match. I'm still hyped to see Daniel Bryan in a WWE ring, but one which is only really defined by its finish. So Shinsuke Nakamura came out and delivered the uppercut to the cock and bollocks of AJ Styles, and then Big Cass with his big leg delivered a big boot to Daniel Bryan. The match ended in DQ. You know, it serves its purpose as far as Shinsuke Nakamura is going to continue feuding with AJ Styles. That's good. But I don't think any of us, even after seeing him backstage, were expecting to see Big Cass come out in the main event. Hopefully, this is just a big statement from Big Cass. We all want to see Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, but maybe we're first of all going to see Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass. If there's anyone that's going to make Big Cass look good, it's certainly Daniel Bryan, but we're all desperate to see The Miz versus Bryan, but maybe we're going to have to wait a little bit for that. I don't know, it doesn't make sense with Miz's promo earlier in the night. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. They've obviously got big things in store for Cass. Overall, I think it's fair to say that SmackDown have absolutely ruined Raw as far as the superstar shakeup goes. They now have Joe, Jeff Hardy, Almas, The Miz, even Big Cass, all capable of touching that main event scene, and their tag division has been greatly improved by the arrival of Sanity, The Bar, and Gallows and Anderson. It feels like Raw got a lot of guys that they can build, but the bigger names have headed to SmackDown, and that's something that SmackDown have needed for over six months now. They have been the weaker brand for quite a while. I remember like a year, maybe a little bit longer ago, SmackDown was the dominant brand. They were putting on the better show every week, and then it sort of tapered off. So this is probably going to be the change that they need perhaps to get back on top. This should be the turning point. Let us know what you think in the comments below. I've been Adam Pacitti and you can follow me on Twitter here. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.